Hello, I'm Susan Woods of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. Thank you for your time. When Mr. George Floyd was murdered, I wanted to take action because I was so angry. I wanted to channel my anger into something positive. So I decided to make a financial contribution to Black Lives Matter. Unfortunately, when I went to the Black Lives Matter website, I was very disappointed in the fact that Black Lives Matter has no structure. It has absolutely no structure. What I mean by that, most organizations that take money from people for the betterment of a community normally has a hierarchy, normally has a leadership structure that you can identify, but Black Lives Matter doesn't. Now on the blacklivesmatter.com website, there are chapters listed, several chapters, I think about 16 chapters. And so I started investigating each chapter and I learned that all of the chapters pretty much operate differently. Once again, under a typical organizational structure with chapters, they normally have the same template that they use, the same action plans, the same goals, the same objectives, but things seemingly work differently among the different chapters. So I decided to create an investigative series to take a look at each and every chapter of Black Lives Matter to identify certain points. And I'm gonna tell you about those points in just a few moments, the things, the focal points that I'm using as the um, basis of the investigation. In this video message, I'm focusing on Black Lives Matter Denver 5280. That's the name of the chapter, Black Lives Matter Denver 5280. And I'm asking the question, where is the money? I ask the question of each chapter. And what I mean by asking that question is this, when people invest money with the different chapters of Black Lives Matter, where does the money go? So I'm looking for a money trail. I want to be able to follow the money. So again, this is episode number six, focus, focusing on Black Lives Matter, Denver 5280. Where is the money? There are several Black Lives Matter chapters, like I said, 16 chapters that are listed on the blacklivesmatter.com website. And this particular video message is focusing in on the Denver, Colorado chapter. Here are the topics that I am investigating for each chapter. The topics, contact information, meaning who is in charge, how can I contact the person in charge, the Black Lives Matter chapter status, the Black Lives Matter IRS filing status, the revenues generated by the chapter, the revenues distributed by the chapter, whether or not the chapter is accepting donations, and whether or not the chapter demonstrates financial transparency. These are the investigation topics that I um, use for each chapter. So I'm going to pause just for a moment to open the Black Lives Matter Denver Chapters website so that we can walk through the steps together to answer these questions. So just one moment, please. Thank you. Okay, so now I am going to share the Black Lives Matter 5280 Denver chapter website. So this is Black Lives Matter 5280, the Denver chapter. And we are on the home page. And over here on the left side, it says, building a violence-free Denver where Black people are valued, protected, and free. Okay. And as I scroll down, you see recent posts, the t-shirts are in, donate to build the movement, so on and so forth. You can go out and look more closely at the website if you choose. Um, but I'm going to go to about, because normally when you click on the about link for any website, it gives you information about who is in charge, the leadership team. So I click on about, and I'm looking for contact information. So on the about page, it has um, working with residents and organizations in Denver 
Black Lives Matter 5280 assist in building more loving and united Black communities while eliminating anti-Black violence and racism, so on and so forth. But again, I'm looking for the person in charge. So let me scroll down. And I don't see any information regarding who's in charge, a telephone number to call, an email to use, or a mailing address. I don't see any of that here. I just see um, fields that I can complete to provide my information uh, and leave a comment and submit. And I'm, I'm assuming somebody is going to reach back out to us or to me if I would do that. So I don't see the contact information that I was looking for here. Okay. Um, let's look at the mission. What is the mission of Black Lives Matter Denver 5280? Our mission, and notice the date here, June 4th, 2015. So I don't know if anybody's really maintaining this website or not. Clearly, this page hasn't been updated since 2015, five years ago. So we are working with residents and organizations in Denver. Black Lives Matter 5280 assist in building more loving and united Black communities while eliminating anti-Black violence and racism, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, don't really see any information here that's beneficial. Uh, letter to the president. I don't know to, if they're talking about letter to the president of the United States. I don't know. But anyway, um, again, this was uploaded on June the 4th, 2015. And it says, we're not gangsters, Black folks and Latino, poor people and people of color. We are not gangsters. George Bush is a gangster. Okay, so clearly that's old. So let's see if they're taking any money or they're accepting any donations. So donate to build the movement. So I'm going to click on donate to build the movement. Okay, so donate to build a movement. Black Lives Matter 5280. Now this was updated on July the 2nd, 2015. And it looks like we can donate. So I'm going to click on donate. And see what happens. Okay, so the PayPal account is still up. It seems like I can just go in and make a donation. I can even choose to make it a monthly donation if I wanted to and donate to Black Lives Matter 5280. So you can donate if you choose to. Okay, now if you are accepting donations, you need to have some type of structure that allows people to follow the money. Normally, if you're taking donations to better the community, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization or some type of charitable nonprofit organization if you use the word donate. So I'm going to now pause the screen just one moment to go to irs.gov to investigate to see if Black Lives Matter Denver 5280 is a 501c3 nonprofit organization capable of taking donations. So just one moment, please, while I do this. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So now I am on irs.gov. And if you've been following me in these investigations, you know I always go to irs.gov and I always go to the tax exempt organization search page because this is where you go in order to find out the status of a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So you can look, you can search in one or two ways. You can search by the employer identification number or you can search by organization name. So since Denver did not have an employer identification number on its homepage, I'm gonna search by organization name. And I'm gonna take out Chicago here, information I was looking up. And I'm going to type in Black Lives Matter Denver 5280. So just one moment, please, while I type this in. Okay, I've typed in Black Lives Matter Denver 5280. I'm going to click on search. 
and it says it's not showing any information. So let's just do a more broad search. And this is what I've been doing all the time. So Black Lives Matter, search. And I know I'm gonna get 13 results. So let's look for Denver. Oh, here we are. Black Lives Matter, 5280, Denver, Colorado. Uh-oh, it's on the auto revocation list. That means the IRS revoked its 501c3 status, which means they are not supposed to take donations because they don't have a status to take donations. The donations, if you make a donation, it's, you're gonna be audited because you're making a donation to an organization with a revoked status. Let me click on the link and let's learn a little bit more. Okay, now, Black Lives Matter 5280 up here, and here's the EIN. You know, they should really put the EIN on the website because the EIN is supposed to be your bragging number. It's supposed to be the number that you use to say, hey, I'm legitimate. Hey, we have credibility. So you should have that on your website and on your business cards and on everything that you share with other people. So anyway, this is the EIN and this is Denver, Colorado, United States. And so we have the auto revocation list. Now, organizations whose federal tax exempt status was automatically revoked for not filing a form 990 series return are noticed for three consecutive years. For three years, they did not file a notice. Important note, just because an organization appears on this list, it does not mean the organization is currently revoked as they may have been reinstated. Well, the exemption type for Black Lives Matter Denver 5280 is not a 501c3 or wasn't a 501c3, it was actually a 501c4. When I click on that, a 501c34 civic leagues, social welfare organization, and local association of employees. Whoever did their application packet decided to choose the 501c3c4 designation, which is a very limited des designation for accepting donations. Normally people use the 501c3 designation because it's more broad and it, it is the one that gives you the most options to accepting donations. But anyway, that's irrelevant because they're revoked. Now, if they had been reinstatement, reinstated, excuse me, they would have an exemption reinstatement date right here. And so they have not been reinstated. They were revoked on May 15, 2019. And the revocation was posted on the website in our IRS documentation on 8 12 2019. So tell me why are they still accepting donations? I don't know. They're not supposed to be accepting donations because they've been revoked. So let me pause the screen and go back to my PowerPoint presentation to reveal the results of the investigation. You can pretty much know what the results are gonna show. So I'm going back to my PowerPoint presentation. Thank you for your patience. And we're gonna look at the results of the investigation. So now we're back to Black, Black Lives Matter, Denver 5280 chapter investigation results. And here we are. Did we find any personal contact information? No. Does it have Black Lives Matter chapter status? Yes, it's located on the blacklivesmatter.com website. What's the filing status with the IRS? It's revoked. The revenues generated, unknown. Revenues um, distributed, I'm sorry, distributed, unknown. Are they accepting donations? Yes. Even with the revoked status, they are still accepting donations. Did we find financial transparency? No. I'm not trying to create problems for Black Lives Matter. I'm really not. 
I just want transparency because it bothers me to see so many people investing in Black Lives Matter, hoping that they're making a difference in the Black community. When we can see, I walk you through the steps I use to investigate these chapters so that you can see me walk through the steps. You can do them yourself and see the status of these organizations. Again, I'm Susan Woods. I started Comprehensive Community-Based Solutions Incorporated in 2003, and I formally incorporated it in 2006. For 10 years, I operated programs through this organization. The first one was Panorama Computer Learning, which I taught displaced manufacturing workers who were middle-aged how to use computers when they lost their factory jobs. The second program I offered was the Emerging Leaders Mentorship Program for Black male youth. I've earned three nonprofit management certificates, one, in, one from Duke University, one from Wake Forest University, and one from Winthrop University. I'm also a three-time graduate of Winthrop University. I earned a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degree, a Master of Arts in Teaching, Business Education, and a Master of Business Administration degree. I teach nonprofit classes. I teach in-person and online classes. I teach people how to start, fund, manage, sustain, and reinstate 501c3 nonprofit organizations. I also teach a grant writing master class. Finally, I complete the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption for clients across the United States. Thus far, I have completed 112. And of those that people have submitted for IRS review, all of them have been approved. So I have a 100% approval rating with the IRS. I share this information because it's important that you know I have the experience to report on these Black Lives Matter chapters and entities. I know what it takes to operate a nonprofit organization correctly. So that's why I'm sharing my background information. It would seem a little odd just to appear without any type of credibility and report on Black Lives Matter without having any type of background information or knowledge on how nonprofits are supposed to work. Remember though, here's what I support. I do support the Black Lives Matter social action slogan. I'm black. Okay, I was born and raised in the South, in South Carolina. I'm well aware of racism. I've experienced it myself many times. Okay, so I support Black Lives Matter. I do not support, I do not support Black Lives Matter chapters and entities that do not provide financial transparency. The IRS makes it very, very easy to do that. So I don't support them because they don't provide transparency. Where is the money? Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can continue following these investigations if you're interested in following them. I also have other classes on my YouTube channel that may benefit you. What's coming up next? Well, the next chapter that I'm investigating is episode number seven, Black Lives Matter Detroit. Thank you so much again for subscribing to my YouTube channel and for your words of encouragement regarding these investigations. I'm Susan Woods of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. Thank you and have a good day.